A uh, really warm welcome to everybody. My name is um, Pippa Jones. I'm the director of Crick Gloucestershire. We're hosting this event today. Um, Crick Gloucestershire, for those of you who don't know, we're a network of creative people and places and organisations across Gloucestershire. We work together to make more creative stuff happen. Um, today's event is all about how we can make more time and space and resources for creativity in our lives, whether that's our personal life, our community life or our professional life. Um, we're thrilled that you and the other 50 or 60 people on this call are interested in this as well. So do scroll along the pages to get a glimpse of everyone who is here. So what do we mean by being creative? Um, my favorite definition is um, that being creative is the ability to create or make something original that has value. So the ability to create or make something original that has value. So that might be a cake, it might be a vegetable patch, it might be a painting, it might be a piece of music, it might be a new mindset, an invention, a doodle. Whatever it is, it brings value to you and to someone else, and it's new, it's original, it hasn't been done before. So creativity often leads to art and cultural products, the stuff that we see in theatres and books and galleries and festivals and exhibitions. But it also leads to new discoveries in science, in medicine, in education, in community work, and the list goes on. So why did we want to hold an event about creativity and bring creative people in Gloucestershire together? For the simple reason that the future is unwritten and creativity is how we write it. Think just for one moment of the challenges of the present moment. In Gloucestershire and across the globe, basic human needs are not being met. Inequality is growing exponentially. There is gender and racial injustice. The planet is being degraded and more people than ever feel a bit scared, overwhelmed and helpless. And that was before COVID-19. And at the same time, there are amazing people and businesses and organizations, as we have gathered today on this call, who are working every day to keep things going and to make things better and to bring hope. So I'm absolutely delighted that four of those people have agreed to share their stories with us today, and then how to grow the creative muscles you need to keep those dreams alive, to be able to turn your dream switch up. We haven't asked them to do a PR exercise for creative, but to share honestly about the highs and the lows, what got them started and what keeps them going. We've only given them 10 minutes each, which is really mean. I know 100% it's not going to do justice to their insights and knowledge and experience, and we'll all be frustrated not to hear more. But if we gave them two hours, there wouldn't be any time left for you. And that would equally, equally be mean. It wouldn't do justice to the creativity that you have and the value that you do make and will make in the future. You might just be getting started on your creative journey and coming today as a first step. You might be a seasoned creative, but need a refresh or a prod to take the next leap. You might be here and not identify as creative at all, but just want to know a bit more about what's happening in Gloucestershire. You might be feeling as flat as a pancake or full of zest and zing and raring to go. At Create Gloucestershire, we believe that we're all born creative, but we also know and see with great like sadness and anger and frustration that we're not all given the same opportunity to discover and nourish and sustain our creativity. Too many children are still told they're not creative. Public investment in arts and culture and creativity does not reach everyone equally. Not all art forms are held with the same value. So Create Gloucestershire is on a mission to rewrite this particular story so that more people in Gloucestershire can be creative more of the time. And after this introduction from me, you won't hear much from the CG team because we're here in listening mode. We want to take full notice of what you tell us helps you to be creative so we can do more of that, but also how life or the system works against you and what we can do about that too. Each of the four speakers in different ways are curious people, thinkers. They've trained themselves 
to think outside the box, well, actually to get rid of the box altogether, um, they actively seek out people or places or ideas that are different because that's often where you find gold. So I really encourage you today to be open to something or someone or an activity that's different for you as a small step to spark um, your creativity. In a minute, we're going to break into smaller groups to give you the chance to introduce yourself and meet six or seven other people here today in a bit more uh, detail than you can in a big, big group. We're then gonna come back together to hear from the four, four guest speakers. And then we'll have a short break for tea, coffee, uh, comfort break, and then go back into the same breakout rooms for a slightly longer session to give you the chance to explore and reflect on what you've heard and what that might mean for you moving um, forward. Um, the last session of the morning, we'll be back in the big group again, when we'll hear from two other um, inspirational creative leaders in Gloucestershire, Imogen Harvey Lewis, who's today's brilliant artist in residence, we're gonna hear from her in a minute, who is going to draw and doodle this event for us. And she's going to share back where she's got to at the end of the day, as a way for us to hear in a different way what we've um, been exploring. And we're also delighted to welcome Sally, B Sally Bing, who's our keynote listener for the day. So Sally leads the Barnwood Trust um, and has had a really active role in the last year, particularly since um, COVID as a convener of a new group of funders called the Gloucestershire Funders Group. And basically Sally's always looking out for how to make things better for everyone in Gloucestershire. So we're really pleased that she's joined us today and her job is going to be to listen to what is being said, but perhaps also to what isn't being said, to whose voices might be missing and whose voices are being heard and share that back as, as another way of us capturing what we've learned today. Hi everyone. Um, I think I've probably got one of the nicest jobs here this morning. Um, I've got my pencils and my crayons and loads of stacks of paper, optimistic stack of paper um, in order to record this, this um, morning's events. Um, so you hopefully have got in the online and been sent out to you a worksheet. If you've had a go, fantastic. If not, not a problem, because this is something that is you cannot do wrong. Um, it's super easy and hopefully something that you might find useful um, for you to kind of refer to. Um, in your kind of creative journey forward um, and also kind of for this morning. So if you haven't done it yet, then just doodle away whilst I'm speaking or whilst you're kind of listening in. So the worksheet you've got through um, is just outlining a very simple idea of creating your storyline, to draw your storyline. And the simple premise of that is here we all are on our Zoom screen, kind of pinged here as if we've just kind of magic, which we kind of had with this amazing tech. But it's kind of drawing and kind of reflecting on how you have arrived at this moment. So you could be kind of thinking about representing yourself, or it could just be an alter ego um, or a character. And thinking about reflecting on how you, what, what's happened up to this moment. We haven't just all kind of just kind of zoomed in, um, kind of Star Trek starts, Star Trek style. Um, um, we we have we have kind of had a morning. We've had a day. We've had a blooming hell of a year, really. So it's quite thinking about how you might reflect that in a drawing. Um, so, for example, a very literal um, idea of drawing your storyline would be just to kind of put a put an undulation. That might be you and literally kind of depicting things that have happened. So cup of coffee, drive to work, not so much now, do a quick drawing and here I am. That's kind of my average day. Um, it might be a journey. This might be a hell of a day. It might be, it might be literally a storm that you've just walked through or kind of driven out on. And here I've got a car. So it's putting yourself down and kind of depicting how you are um, to this moment. Yesterday, I quickly depicted the day. You might be the type of person who wants to actually kind of uh, use it as a document. So this drawing here is a bad dream, trying to get up, rush to catch my son before he goes to work, making a list of things to do, easy pottering, realised the PowerPoint for an event I'm doing tomorrow wasn't working, which was a massive nightmare. It was a bit of a fall off, a big stress, sorted it out, 
sorting out a presentation, bit of planning, a nice walk with a friend, all a bit calm, cooking tea, a phone call at the end. And there's me kind of uh, made it to the end of the day. So it could be literally like a kind of diagram. And really it's just a license to play. And we like the idea of here I am now, what's my journey to this point, but then what might my future line be? So it might be that you've just got a lovely smooth, everything's kind of peachy kind of line, um, but your idea your, for your kind of creative future is kind of, well, I want it to get a bit more kind of choppy. I want it to get a bit more eventful. So how might that be? Might you flourish into color or might you, you be after that kind of simple line? So if you haven't had a chance and you want to, have a quick kind of reference back to the um, PDF that you will have had sent out and either play with it now or play with it in the future. But it's a really nice kind of tool just to kind of visualize not and you know not have to rely on words and be able to kind of get it out um, on paper. So that's that's the that's the plan. Thanks, Imogen. That's brilliant. We'll really look forward to um, both that exercise and seeing what you do throughout the day. You're going to be feeding back at the end. So we'll look forward to welcoming you back then. Um, we're going to break out into smaller breakout rooms now. So hopefully that's given you a, a, a chance to meet a couple of, uh, meet in a smaller space uh, in this large meeting. Um, we're now going to um, hear from four speakers who are going to share some insights and thoughts that they have about creativity about their journey into it, um, how they uh, keep keep going with it and um, refresh and nourish their creativity. Uh, so really, um, really pleased to welcome. We're going to start with Thomas, who I actually can't see on my screen. Um, Thomas for some time was on the Craig Lister board. Um, he's the co-founder and director of Miller Howard Workshop, which is a, a local architect's practice in um, Stroud and Chalfer, but working across and Thomas is uh, really interested in data and technology and virtual reality and artificial intelligence and always has great ideas and always thinks outside the box and often destroys the box totally, um, as anybody who's been to a Craig Gloucester board will know. And we've given each, as I said before, we've given each of the speakers just 10, 10 minutes, which won't be enough, but hopefully enough of a taster um, to, to uh, whet your appetite to know more and to um, springboard into some of the conversations about what you might do next. So Thomas, over to you. Hi there. Um, okay, so um, yeah, thank you very much for that, Pippa. Um, my name's Thomas Miller. Um, I run an architect's practice in Chalford um, in St. Mary's Mill, and this is the team. Yeah, these are some of the buildings uh, that we've designed, but I'm really excited today to um, not be talking about our buildings, but creativity and more more in general and I'd like to talk about two stories um, one is about my own creative journey um, and then uh, the second is um, about a possible kind of creative um, anchor for Gloucestershire and Stroud in particular um, yeah so in my own creative journey um, I wanted to talk about this one video that I started watching when I was eight um, that's been really influential in my creative journey. Um, it's about this guy, George Grenoch, and he, um, in it, um, it, basically a documentary mapping his life. And he's a surfer in California, and he doesn't like, um, although he loves surfing, he doesn't like the crowds. Um, and so the film is about him getting away from the crowds. Um, and he films using this amazing camera um, that, you know, nowadays we could film on our phone, but then you needed this enormous camera. Um, it's a super slow motion camera. It was taken from the um, uh, defense industry. So it's a slow motion camera for analyzing the path of bullets and explosions, but he kind of adapts it and puts it in this case and uses it to film underwater. Um, and there's an amazing 30 minute uh, section at the end of the film about that. Um, so how has this film affected my life so much? Um, well, there's, a, it, there's different parts of the film and it slightly haunts me in kind of trying to work out its meaning. But early on in the film, um, there's this scene where he has this dream. So he says, one night I dreamt I went to San Miguel Island where I was visited by some people from outer space who came in a flying saucer. The boat that I went there in was enclosed just like a car and was just as comfortable. It seemed like a good idea, so I built the coop. 
it seems like a good idea, so I built the coop. I think that phrase is kind of really, um, really gets to me. And I suppose it's this idea of have the, the audacity, I suppose, of having a dream and then just acting on it and building it. Having a dream one day and the next day making that into a reality. And the power of that is something that's really stayed with me and helped kind of drive my creative process. Later on, he then buys a bigger boat, um, the hull of a boat, and he spends a year doing this up um, and so that he can then go off sailing with his friends. And they can now go anywhere in the world um, and they can surf on their own waves without the crowds. Um, and so the sort of second half of the film is about this kind of journey with them on the boat. Um, and the last thing he says before the, this kind of beautiful section of filming underwater is there's a lot to learn from the ocean, but we had taken the difficult step we had begun. And so again, this is like the idea that there's this kind of big wide world out there of adventure and unknown. But the really important thing is to take that very first step. And there are multiple other things in the film that I find really inspiring, but these two kind of moments in particular, whenever I'm feeling um, a bit uncertain about what I'm doing, whether I'm heading in the direct, right direction or whether I'm doing the right thing, or I'm nervous about doing a new thing, I kind of revisit these ideas and they give me encouragement to, um, uh, to change the way I work or to do something different. And so that's my own kind of uh, personal creative anchor that I use to kind of help navigate um, my way through life. Um, I think it's interesting to think about a more communal sort of anchor around a place, maybe a place-based kind of anchor. And I live in Stroud, um, this wonderful kind of landscape uh, with a unique topography. And I think the anchor that Stroud has is it's a place of making has been since the kind of middle ages really where making happened in individual houses and particularly kind of of cloth and then in the late sort of 1700s and early 1800s kind of industrialization starts to happen and people move from these smaller cottages into the mills um, I think it's amazing to think that at one point, I think Stroud was one of the most industrialised places on the planet, which is a kind of really interesting um, idea. Um, and of course, has great inventions like the, the lawnmower was invented in Stroud. Um, but also has always had a history of, um, I suppose, uh, resistance and so social justice and thinking about uh, the technologies and the industry you, we use, what effect that actually has on people's lives. And so well before the Luddite movement um, in the early 1800s, in the late 1700s, in, in, around Gloucestershire and Wiltshire, people were starting to rebel against the kind of industrialization. And then later when industry moved north, you then get the kind of arts and crafts movement kind of moving into these kind of empty spaces and um, tapping into this kind of making and creative culture. And that continues today with um, all sorts of businesses like, like the sort of pangolin that's creating art in Chalford. Um, all these creative businesses that occupy these kind of the valley bottoms, which were traditionally where all the industry happened. But there's also this kind of um, idea of resistance and social justice and environmental justice. This tension between this innovation and this making and then how that innovation affects people's lives and how we can move forward. And so we feel really privileged to be kind of operating in this context. This is the kind of building I'm in up in the top floor of St Mary's Mill in Chalford. And we've been thinking about what, what's our responsibility to this? How, how, how can we continue this tradition? And as architects, we're kind of really thinking about housing. And of course, not this type of housing of a kind of um, a cookie cutter um, developments that are really built for profit um, and built by very few kind of large companies. Um, but is there a way that we could empower ourselves to build better houses that are more affordable um, and uh, benefit the community in more detail? In, in, yeah, and so UK has very low self-build numbers. Um, so our proposal really is to kind of thinking about self-build as a kind of way of empowering people and place to 
uh, create to solve the housing crisis. Architecture and buildings and inefficient process. There's lots of kind of backwards and forwarding through different consultants, planners, contractors, engineers, architects. The result of this, only 51% of the value of a building goes into the actual building. The rest is in this kind of risk fees, overheads and things. So we looked at different industries, kind of um, car industry or kind of IKEA about kind of how do, how do they do things differently and break things into these ideas of sub assemblies, systems, products. And Wikihouse, which is where these slides are taken from, from Open Systems Lab, Wikihouse proposes this idea of creating an open source construction system that anyone can download from the internet, where parts can be digitally cut and then put together into houses and how this could create a new process um, where people can da download designs for free from the internet and then put them together and, um, and then at the end of a building's life, disassemble them, making a more streamlined process. And the thing that I think is really exciting for Stroud is this idea that this could be done not in a kind of centralized manufacturing um, place, but in a kind of distributed manufacturing. Um, in a kind of, uh, not in big, big factories, but in small workshops, which would lend itself perfectly to Stroud. And so it's this idea of moving back out of these big industrialised places and back into the smaller scale um, production, um, which is this movement that we've seen more generally over the last year of people moving back to a much more local setting. And can we create houses that are not only kind of um, lower cost and uh, more efficient to build, but actually a kind of delight um, to live in. Um, and so this is what we've been doing for the last few years. Um, we've got this sister company, Lived In Custom Build, who are kind of trying to pioneer this. Um, I suppose this is our vision. Um, this is our vision for the area and a kind of story about making and the industrialization of Stroud and how we'd like to be part of the next phase of that industrialization, this fourth industrial revolution um, around digital manufacturing. But I'd be really excited to hear uh, later today other people's um, vision for Gloucestershire in the area. And please do get in touch if you'd like to share our vision or share a different vision as well. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Really nice slide to end on, on a, a event about creativity. Um, and it's really also lovely to have the, that sense of history and the roots of creativity in Gloucestershire coming all the way forward to today. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I know everybody will have questions and I know it's me not to let anybody ask any questions, but that's the way that we've planned it today. But as you say, people can get in touch with you afterwards oh, um, you. or during the day. So thank you. We're now going to pass to um, share, pass over to the um, project manager at the Venture White City, um, who's the secretary of the Robinswood and Matson Community Partnership. Dawn is a powerhouse. During COVID, she has designed and home delivered thousands, and that's not an exaggeration, thousands of food and creative packs to people across um, the community she works in. And she has worked with, I think about 81 volunteers, but she'll give us the facts and figures. And so she's going to share with us um, some of the insights that she has about how people have been comforted, but perhaps also challenged by creativity during the last year. So Dawn, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, over to you. I'm just gonna give you a, a um a kind of a talk about the organisation I work for and what we've been doing during COVID, a little bit more about our wider community work and then a bit about my personal journey. So I'm going to start with the organisation I work for, which is The Venture in White City. And we provide community support and engagement for all ages, both in our own community, but also across our wider ward. And our core function is play. So it's play what brings people to our facility. We have a lovely community built adventure playground and a play hut building. On a day-to-day -day basis, um, we supervise the playground after school and during all school holidays, and we do that all year round. We've been doing that now for over three decades, and so we're really well rooted in our community, um, and we're in a really trusted position, and that's a real privileged place for us to be. We operate on the three frees principle at the playground. So the first three free is that we are free um, to come to. So there's no charge involved for anybody who wants to come and join in with what the venture does. And that's really important to us because it makes it inclusive. 
Um, we are an open access adventure playground, which means that people are free to come and go as they please. So we don't book anybody in or book anybody out. We don't make anybody come or we don't make anybody stay. So people have that kind of freedom to come and go as they please. And then within reason, people are free to do what they want when they come to the playground. So lots of um, we have lots of loose parts and lots of resources. And it's about kind of people self-directing their play, self-directing what they want to do and choosing how they want to participate if they want to participate. It's very, so it's very much a free flowing environment where it's kind of like a, we call it our extended family. It's a place where people are accepted and people can just be who they want to be and how they want to be. And that's a really nice place um, for people to come to. We provide a wide range of activities and opportunities. So we do lots of arts and crafts, we do sports and games, we do dance, drama, cooking, and our neighbours particularly love it when we get out on our outdoor stage and do karaoke and performances. That's always a, a, a cheerful moment. And we also do residential holidays, day trips, and we also do small pieces of commission work for our local authority. So we work particularly with kind of vulnerable and at-risk children for that. On a personal level, I've been involved in Venture for 28 years and, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later but I'm really proud of the fact that our team of four and we're a small team of staff have a collective 63 years of employment at the venture so we're a really homegrown team that really is embedded in the community and understands our community because lots of us live there and have lived there and have grown up using the venture. So like lots of people, when COVID hit, we had to kind of look at how we were providing services and what we what we could do to make sure that we could still provide services to our community, because for us, it wasn't an option not to. Um, the playground is the most consistent place and probably the most consistent set of people in many people's lives in our communities. And so it was important for us that during this time of just massive unknown and like nothing we've ever seen before, that we were there to support people when they needed it most. So we had to think really creatively about how we could adapt our services and do that. So there were three strands that we kind of um, worked on. So one, as Pippa says, was a food support. So the venture supplements food anyway. We've done that for many years. We provide free food at all our play sessions and free hot meals during the school holidays. And that's a particular kind of um, importance for people who have free school meals. Um, they don't have that comfort of those when it's school holidays. So we're lucky enough to be part of a wider city food consortium. So we had access to um, food, more food than we normally would. And we were able to put together support packages for um, families to make sure that they didn't go hungry. So we've done over a thousand kind of um, food hampers, free packages for our families. And more recently, we were part of a partnership project that was commissioned by the county council to deliver 5,180 home cooking kits for children and families during Easter holidays. And as Pippa mentioned, we had 71 volunteers um, involved in that crazy piece of work, but we did it. And it was a really well received project with lots of positive um, feedback from parents and families. So the next strand was our community connection. So um, the venture is a really social um, place. It's the focal point of the community and it's where people meet and where people gather. So obviously during COVID, we couldn't do that. So we had to take that to people's doorsteps. So we did that in a variety of ways. Um, we did a, a socially distant V day party for our elderly residents and we were out in the street singing and dancing, which is brilliant. We've also done front garden picnics, Easter parades, Christmas parades, anything to get people out onto their doorsteps and maintaining that contact with us. So I think when times are really tough and people feel really anxious and stressed and unsure of what's happening, see, seeing a familiar, friendly face is really helpful. So we wanted to make sure that we maintain those connections and kept people kind of um, comforted by the fact that they knew we were still here, here supporting them. So that was really important. And then we had our third strand, which was our creative opportunities. So we have a very creative culture at the venture. It's a huge part of playground life and always has been. So it was important for us to make sure that people still had a creative outlet during COVID. So um, we have a community choir. So we took that online. So we started running those sessions over Zoom and that was great because it meant people could still take part. And actually, we were able to engage with more people online because people were able to come because they didn't have to leave their house. So in some ways, it kind of enabled us to reach more people. Just before COVID hit, we'd started running um, Hear Me Out sessions with a group of young people. And the idea was... Um, the idea was that we would... Um, 
these young people would meet and they would talk about music and their likes and dislikes and all that kind of stuff and, and share their opinions on things. And then thirdly, we did our craft packs and these were bags of activities that um, we delivered to people's homes so they could take part in a creative activity um, and, and kind of still have a creative outlet. And that was massively important, particularly as parents told us that they didn't have the mental capacity to think about being creative. With all the other stresses and strains that COVID brought to their households, they just didn't have the capacity to think about being creative as well. So they really liked the fact that these bags turned up on their doorstep. It had everything in that people needed. And we had an online video that people could um, put on as well and see one of the play team there doing the creative activity. So that, that was really important. And we've done 5,000 and 200 of those over covid we've got another 300 due out in a couple of weeks so that was really that was really good covid was tough for the team um i think during lockdown number three we hit a brick wall and we were tired both physically and mentally and the that kind of intense way of working that change of our delivery really kind of was hard going much harder to deliver services to people rather than coming to to your place to have them so we had to allow ourselves that kind of period of rest and recovery um, and allow ourselves to feel like that, but knowing that we kind of had helped people and were helping people kept us going. So we're not ones to rest on our laurels in White City and we have massive plans for a, a community centre, a flagship community passive house community centre that we've been working on with our community for the last five years. And there's a long story behind it, but in a nutshell, the community have taken a stand because over the last however many years we've been stripped of all our community assets and as much as adventure is great it has limits and can only do so much so the community has taken a real stand partly against the stigma that communities like white city have because the statistics will tell you we're in the top 10 percent most deprived areas nationally but that shouldn't and it doesn't define us we don't let that define us our community knows the problems it faces it knows the issues we have and we're working creatively to address those issues we're not sat back waiting for anyone to do that to us or um you know um be kind of grateful for everything that gets thrown our way we're doing finding our own future and kind of doing that um in in a way that's kind of not expected and a way that people don't think communities like ours ours um, should be doing i have to wrap up now so i'm just getting a little message that says uh we need to wrap up. So I'm going to skip to my kind of personal journey. So um, I was um, quite a kind of lonely, isolated child. Um, my parents were kind of functioning alcoholics and it was what it was. That was kind of what childhood was like for me. But I found adventure when I was about eight. And over the years, it became my safe haven. It was the place where I felt people listened, people nurtured me, people took an interest in me. And I know full well that if it wasn't for the venture, I wouldn't be where I am today. And that's a fact. And I think the thing that gets me out of bed every day is that the venture continues to do that for other children and young people are part of that. One that minute. bell's ringing. <laughs> do One I need minute. to stop now? One minute. One minute. OK, so. Um, the venture nurtured me and helped me to develop resilience. It encouraged me to have ideas and think big about things. And they gave me a platform to explore things. And it didn't matter if things didn't go right or things didn't go the way they planned. I felt safe and supported in that environment to try new things. And that's followed me through that creative streak. And I think one of the things that I love most now about creativity is I teach a lot of art and craft classes and I love it. I love seeing the growth in people when you spark their creativity. And, and we have lots of mums who take their products home to their households and they say, my husband said, you didn't make that. And they say, but I did make it. And the husbands go, but you, you couldn't make that. And they say, but I did. And actually, their families are then going, wow, that's that's just amazing. And that kind of self-confidence and that pride that people feel when you've clicked their creative switch and watching that grow, for me, is just the very essence of creativity. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dawn. Um, that kind of um, refusal to give up and to, to do what a community or what you're told should be done is comes out so strongly and that's such a big part of creativity isn't it believing that the future can be different and you can write it differently thank you so much for sharing dawn that's brilliant um we're going to pass over to shalise now shalise nicholas who's a designer and director of maggio matilda which is a, a luxury sustainable and ethical um brand based in stroud 
Um, Shalise has got a real passion for zero waste fashion and she's going to share with us how she discovered that and also how she's had to really kind of um, uh, work super hard to make that a reality in a successful business. So Shalise, over to you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I was really excited when I got told that I could do this and uh, would I like to speak with Mastershare? because um, they've been a great supporter of me um, uh, when I started and throughout um, the, the business growth as well. Um, so yeah, let me tell you a little bit about what I do. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I run Maddie Matilda. It's a sustainable clothing brand, um, which um, has zero waste practices. Um, we create everything from uh, end of line fabrics, um, which are either, um, dead stock or materials that are upcycled so clothing that might be donated to us it could be curtains it could be anything but we're just trying to stop it from going to landfill um, and being created into new clothing um, so it has a, a longer lifespan um, that being said we also want it to look aesthetically pleasing and something that people want to buy um, and I think we've managed to achieve that. Um, and so, yeah, my creative journey started with a dream. I wanted to be a, um, an artist when I was a child. And um, my mum's friend was like, oh, well, you won't make any money from doing that. You, you won't be able to survive. And I was like, well, I really love art. So, <laughs> and it almost made me rethink, like, what else could I do? And I was always a very inquisitive child. I wanted to do something that that had purpose and um, was a part of being creative. So um, I went and studied fine art um, at Science Sister College. And in that, um, I met a tutor who always pushed me and she really drove my, um, my ideas and my, my aspirations for being a designer. Um, she, told me I'd have to work hard and I didn't realize how hard I'd have to work but um, it, it sparked that that in, inquisitive mind that I had um, and made me want to do more um, it made me look at career progression as like okay if this doesn't work I'm going to keep trying I'm going to try something else I'll, I'll, I'll look into uh, other ways of working and um so I tried lots of different um, work experiences. I went to work for Little Woods and Very. Um, really loved working there. It was a, like a massive corporation. So being a part of that and being a small cog in that um, helped to form my ideas of what I wanted to do. Um, and then I went to work for like um, designers who did like print design and smaller, smaller companies and um, how they worked like learning how to do things like print making and you know just exploring I really wanted to explore every element of fashion and design and art <laughs> um, but I found on my journey that there's a dark side to fashion as well there's the side that's um that's not so great where people aren't put first and um you know um profit is made more important you know than than what you know why would you want to um why why would you take on interns that was a question people would say to me but I I thought I I was an intern at one time and I wanted to pass on my knowledge and have somebody else um flourish and see them grow um I I wanted to keep going and, and try different routes and becoming my own boss it was um, something that I thought, you know, I, I need to give this a go in a different way. Um, so, yeah, there's been ups and downs. And, you know, what, looking at the, the dream switch um, uh, diagram where everything's all like, um, well, the squiggle that was there <laughs> on the page, I would say that was my life. Um, I've gone through, you know, lots of highs and lows and um, ways of working to, to find, you know, that, there is a you you pick out the good things and you you keep pushing those and that's what I what I, what I did. Um, so yeah, um, 
one thing that I find really important is sticking to my values as well. Like I, there's this want within me that didn't want to do something that was um, that wasn't sustainable. I wanted to produce things for purpose and reuse clothing that um, and make it into something new, not have it thrown away. I hated waste. So waste is um, waste is something that I absolutely hate and every single scrap within the business um, gets reused. And if it's not used, it's used for something else. It's used for filler, it's used for whatever we can physically think of to use it for. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I do as a business. Um, but yeah, along with, on my journey, um, collaborations have been really a key integral part of it. Um, being able to work in stride in the, in a community where um, creativity is like the main thing. I think I found it really inspiring just growing up in this time where everybody, you know, has some creative outlet. And I think that's what's made me want to be a creative person and going forwards, like watching what other people can do. So um, I'm also a mentor and a support worker um, when I'm not at the business. Um, so I find it really rewarding to see people um, and young people, especially um, move forward and hear about their stories, like what they've gone and done after they've interned for me or if they're, they're needing support in support work that I'm doing, um, like hearing that they've gone on to university or they've, you know, that the lecturers come back and said, oh, um, such and such is really thriving now. And before she didn't have any sort of drive to, to do anything. And like, what was it that you did? And, and that's really rewarding to hear that, that I can have an impact on somebody else's life and help them to move forward even just by being a little bit um, helpful. Um, obviously there's positives and negatives. So one of the, the negative things that, that drove me as a designer is people saying, oh, but why? Why do you do what you do? Um, and that really pushed me to move forward. Um, I think when you're, when you're down, it's easy to to just quit and say, well, it's too hard. You know, how, how can I do this? Um, but I, within me, I've got this drive, which it's, it doesn't, it's never put out, that fire is never put out. It always makes me wanna keep going. Um, so when something is really tough, I, I try and look at it another way, like, okay, that isn't working. What else could I do? Can I change it in some way? What, what other, people can I talk to who can I find um um like watching a movie just like that guy said earlier watch, watching talk I think um watching a movie will that inspire me um yeah I think it's really important to look at the tough times and, and see is there another way that you can do things um so yeah going on um Encouraging others, I think I think it's important to to really support others because you don't know where people are going to be in from a year from now to um, five years from now. And I always try to to think about things in a way like if you treat others the way that you would want to be treated. And that's been my mantra for my whole life. Like that's the way I, I work as a, a person. Um, I've worked in lots of different local communities like Atelier, Stride um, and um, smaller community groups as well. Um, and every single thing that I do, I make plans for. So. If you are looking to follow a creative dream, I think it's really important. Sorry. Okay. I think it's really important to have um, a plan in place and to follow that. Um, and if that changes, don't worry about it's not going in the straight path. Follow, follow it, but but welcome those opportunities. Follow um, 
other ways, ask questions, like um, find other people in the community that you can talk to and discuss uh, any little questions that you have. Like I started with um, the Prince's Trust and, you know, to this day, I'm still asking questions. I think it's really important to ask questions. So um, if I can give any advice to anyone, I would say make sure you do ask lots of questions. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Shalee, so much. I love that way you describe how you welcome the bumps and the deviations as much as when things are going smoothly and how you can really, um, how you kind of get over the bumps by talking to people and connecting with people and asking advice. And that's really why we wanted to hold this event today because when you're starting out or when you've hit a bump, it can be easy to, it can feel like you're on your own. So thank you so much for that advice. I think it's really wise and for such a thoughtful 10 minutes I could all yeah hear more as with everybody so thank you very much Lee. Um, I'm going to pass over to Sam now. Um, Sam's a consultant oncologist at Cheltenham Hospital. He specializes in lung and brain tumors um, but also has set up Medicine Unboxed which is this amazing festival that brings um, medicine and arts together to shed light on medicine through the arts and to look at it in a different way. Um, Sam's a poet and um, has just, I don't, I'm not exactly sure the date, but has also has just published a, a debut novel. So um, really pleased to welcome you today, Sam. Thank you for coming on your day off to share your insights and wisdom about creativity. Over to you. Thanks, Pippa. And thanks very much to Thomas Chalise and Dawn for their great and um, stirring talks. So I started work as a doctor in <clears throat> 1995, and I've been a consultant oncologist in this town for 15 years now. Um, and I guess this, my role, this role demands and expects certain things from me. It expects I have uh, knowledge, for sure, but weaved into that um, judgment. And also, I believe very much um, it expects feeling from me and imagination. So I find myself alongside my day job uh, as a writer, a reader, someone very much enthralled to the tug of words and music. And the director, as Pippa says, of Medicine Unboxed, which is a project I founded about 12 years ago now, a project that asks uh, all of us to wander together about medicine through the lens of the arts uh, and creativity. And we held for some 10 years um, events in Cheltenham um, to an audience of around 300 people, um, non-profit events that centred on themes such as wonder, love, mortality, um, stories. Um, uh, and most recently, the last event was love. Next year, um, in fact, probably in London, we're going to be holding an event on the theme of matter, inspired, I guess, by the fact that the virus that has changed the world this last year is nothing more than a packet of matter, not even alive in itself yet, has asked us all to reappraise, in a sense, what does matter. I think I'd like to talk to you about what creativity means to me in my day job, really. Um, the experience on the ground for me is one every day of being buffeted by events, by human lives, by stories, by many losses, but also by moments of real, very real beauty. Uh, it'd be like the light for me coming and going on the dark water of a lake. It can be, and often it's very painful, but also very often indeed bright and illuminated. I'm not a religious person at all, but I might say uh, the days are filled with moments of real grace. And this you might all recognise, all of you on this screen, as the exact experience of being a human being. Uh, as Louis McNeese, the poet, described it, a prism of delight and pain. So for me to be creative within this feels a particular way of meeting it, meeting the world, of encountering and fathoming the world, um, a way, as Dennis Potter, the playwright, said, of seeing the blossom. Instead of just saying, oh, that's nice blossom, he wrote, I see it as the whitest, frothiest, blossomest blossom that ever could be. The idea then of creativity, its emergence within human consciousness, to what extent it's the province of the divine, whether it's an act of magic, making something from nothing, or simply an imitation or a varnishing of reality. This idea has been argued about for many centuries for much bigger minds, 
But for me, as a person and a doctor in this small town, facing this prism of delight and pain, creativity is just this. It's a very particular way of seeing the world. It's an opening into it. It's a scalpel of sorts, one that lands our gaze beneath, underneath the smooth and seemingly unconnected veneer of the world. This way of seeing may or may not result in a symphony or a sonnet, uh, architecture or fashion, but just the act itself is transformative for the person who's doing the seeing and for the object that's seen. As T.S. Eliot wrote, the roses had the look of flowers that are looked at. And regardless, it's a way of meeting the world, which is to my mind personally vital, vital. And so an event like this feels important to me in reminding us of that. Creativity for me joins us. It connects us to other life. It allows us to identify with other world views, to imagine them, but it also demonstrates us all as very similar, as faulted, as hopeful, as culpable persons. It reveals us as, as much a construct of matter as the blossom opening in the spring or as the swifts that are about to arrive, as prone to the whole clockwork and weathering of the world, as fragile as all of it, that we're irreducibly connected to it and therefore we're responsible for the world in our actions. This feeling is both one of uh, vertigo, but also one of balm, like a child facing the moon or lulled by the love dub, lullaby of a heartbeat. It garners meaning, I feel, by which we might live. It fathoms this meaning, not arbitrarily, but actually fathoms it. Reflect with it from me, surely, by which we even encounter an idea like love. So my encounter then with Joan in Ed 3 as a doctor, my stance towards the care of Mrs. Jones is informed, yes, by graphs, by studies, by data, by p-values, but it really is shaped as much by arias, by the rhythm of a piece of writing or the ache that I feel in a painting. So it feels important to recognize now that we diminish ourselves, all of us, as doctors, as patients, as moral agents, as society, if we hold on to a worldview, a conceit that is just surface, one where we insist that everything is knowable, everything is monetizable, entirely prone to mastery or entitlement. This is a wasteland void of human imagination and creativity and gift. In fact, we are all fragile, contingent beings but are open to being struck by wonder if only we choose to look up and look differently. We are, as T.S. Eliot wrote, menaced by monsters and fancy lights, risking enchantment. And we are connected in this. For me to be creative is both to demonstrate this and to foster it every year and all the time, but especially this year and especially at this time in our world. Thank you very much. Oh, Sam, thank you. That was like an extended poem and it was beautiful and a perfect, perfect place to end because you're talking about going beneath the surface, um, going into the space that we don't know, the vulnerability of that, the unknowingness and how creativity gives us, uh, gives us a way of going there. And, and um, you described so beautifully that prism of delight and pain that we all have in life. So, Thank you so much for ending this uh, section, which was all about helping people to feel inspired, helping people to think a bit differently, to go a little bit deeper. Um, really grateful for you to, for sharing, but also to Shalise and to Dawn and to Thomas for um, yeah, such a rich, such a richness. And I'm really glad we've recorded it because I think certainly I will, and I'm sure other people would like to go back and just hear those words again. We are going to go back into the breakout rooms that we were in this morning. Um, we're going to have an opportunity in that to reflect on what we've heard um, and to use that as a springboard into what our next creative step might be. Um, you might have the one of the speakers in your breakout room, 
And just as a little kind of caution, we need to avoid spending all the time asking them questions to find out a bit more, because this now is time for you to take time for your thinking and your reflection and your uh, creative space. And we'll make sure that um, any questions or anything you want to know more, we can link you up with the speakers after the event. So welcome back. We definitely didn't have enough time in that session for everything that we were talking about. But what we're going to do now is to capture so that we can hear from everybody what um, were the main things that people wanted to share back with the group. What was the potent things, the things that everybody wanted everybody else to hear. So we're going to go round the nine breakout groups. Um, Jay, can I put you on the spot to go first, please? If you're back. Yes, I'm back. Thanks very much. <laughs> Just making copious notes. Uh, are happy. you going to feedback or somebody in your group? No, I'm, I'm happy to feedback on behalf of our, our small but perfectly formed group. OK, thank you. Um, we had things that um, enable creativity and we had things that really get in the way of us being creative that we talked a lot about, um, stimulated by the speakers. In terms of things that really help us is this idea about um, just being playful. All of the speakers talked about this idea of, of, of not worrying, of playing, of trying it out, of, of giving it a go um, and laughing and enjoying that. Um, we, we felt that was a really important thing, along with being curious, asking lots of questions, finding out. Um, mentoring and support seems to be a really huge enabler. So being able to offer our own support and give, give strength to somebody that's trying something out, um, might not know the answer, but is giving it a go anyway. How can we amplify and support others and also um, find those places we can get that support for ourselves on our creative journeys. We spent a bit of time thinking about COVID um, and that being a, a multi-faceted experience, of course, for everybody. And on the plus side, COVID, we felt that COVID had actually in many ways released us from the old structures and ways of being so that it allowed us to just have a go. You know, um, if something isn't working, what can we try differently? Um, it's released a mindset, a new mindset of ways of working. Um, but on the flip side of that, in some ways, it, it may have made us more risk averse. So um, in that way, being, a, being an underminer of creativity as well. Um, we noticed the other things that undermine us are things like big, big structures and, and um boundaries that we just accept as the way they are. We talked about, for example, uh, planning laws stimulated by um, Thomas's presentation around flat pack housing. You know, what about if the planning laws were different and enabled housing to be built in different ways, leasing land for a certain amount of time, unpacking your house, packing it away and then moving somewhere else as a, a really creative way of reimagining how we might live together. Um, and we also felt that, that a huge underminer on a personal level was this fear, fear of failure, which comes from a very early, early, early stage of um, uh, not getting something right um, being a problem. Um, so being able to break through that fear of, of not getting it right, just giving it a go anyway, thinking big and um, trying it out. Great, thank you, Jay. Thinking big, trying it out. What brilliant feedback, love it. Um, Alicia, can we come to you next, please? Either you or somebody in your group? Yes, very happy to feedback. I checked with the group and um, they asked us to feedback. But as I said in our group, please do add um, more into the chat if I've missed things. So um, we had a wonderful group of people, um, Kim, Nicola, Mikhail, Anna and Christina, who were in our group. Um, I think the overriding feeling um, coming from the speakers was um, the in, how inspiring it was to hear their passion and their determination. And there was a sense that that passion and determination has is how they um, uh, work in their life was a real inspiration for everyone in the group because I think people were saying that it's 
it's very clear that um, we all need added resilience. We need that resilience. And I think those speakers really inspired an added resilience um, within the members of the group. I think also um, what came out of the discussion was how um, really, an, well, what a new viewpoint of creativity is. Creativity underpins everything. It's not just your traditional viewpoint of being creative, but how you can be creative in all aspects and how you approach every single thing in your life. And I think that that has come through the speakers and has inspired uh, members of our, our group to um, think differently about what creativity is. Um, we had uh, a lot of uh, uh, people working in arts and health in our group. And um, in the earlier discussion, there was a, a sense of how can we really work around the inequalities of some of the, uh, um, the challenges that are met around inequalities at the moment. So that was another theme that came out earlier in the group. Um, and let me just see if there's anything I've particularly missed. Um, I think that, yes, a sense of collaboration, how important collaboration is for creativity and how when you're moving your projects forward, how important it is to have those networks and support groups and I think already we've got lots of collaborations that are going to come out of our networking group. So um, I think that's it, really. Was there anything else that I've missed in my group? Please, please do put it in the chat if I yeah. haven't represented everything. Thank, Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah, do use the chat if, um, you're, if, you, if there's something missing from the feedback or something you want to add or build on. That's what the chat would be great for. Um, Nick, can we come to you next, please? You certainly can, Pippa. Um, I, I had a great group as well. I suppose I always think that the people I'm working with are the best people in the whole <laughs> in the whole event. Um, but Shani and Jason, Fraser, Brandon, Roger and Ruth joined us briefly this morning as well. Um, I think that the, the, the feedback that we have or the things that we've noticed in terms of what what is the that makes us hopeful about creativity, you know, in, in, at a personal level and across the county, um, the first thing we sort of we took from the talks was the the, the passion that Alicia mentioned, um, the fact that there was some really inspiring examples. And interestingly, at the beginning of our our day to day, people talked about the need for inspiration. You know, one of the challenges has been the isolation that's been uh, you know uh, there throughout the pandemic, and and actually being able to tackle that and come together in this kind of way was something in itself that was just really helpful and actually brought hope. Um, but we talked about the importance of being able to make mistakes, learn from mistakes, um, not, not have a fear of getting things wrong and be able to, you know, actually try things out. So that, that was a consistent theme I think we've heard already. Um, the sense of community being really important, being able to bring people together um, across, uh, you know, in mediums like this, but, but you know, in face-to-face -face environments as well. Um, we also noticed that kind of keeping going, that resilience that's important and that came out through some of the, the speakers' talks. Uh, and, and, and sort of almost an extrapolation from that is the sense that it's easy to think about creativity in a, in a way which is, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's unstructured. But actually, there's something about having discipline and having structure and having kind of the support scaffolding that, that can make creativity, um, you know, uh, really flourish. Uh, and often the constraint and the, the things that can feel like they're challenges or difficulty can also be the great protagonist or catalyst for things being more creative. So that was something that we, we saw as, as hopeful as well. Um, in terms of barriers, we noticed there was a tendency for us to be self-critical or to think things might not work or kind of have that doubt. And particularly when we were, when you marry that with isolation, it feels like that gets amplified. So this, you know, bringing people together feels, you know, really a key, you know, key aspect at the moment. Um, the, the, the idea that across Gloucestershire, there's a sense that there's a changing community, maybe. Um, uh, uh, there's, there's a, a, you know, a county and under change. And, you know, that's a, a barrier or a challenge, but it's also something that offers great opportunities. So being aware of that and, and, and being present to that, you know, the different, maybe the lack of, of, of a cross county media or the kind of the, the sense that different localities in the county kind of dominate um, through different kind of different um, different reasons for that. But that was something that we talked a little bit about. Um, and then we also looked at this idea of how do you balance your own creative practice with how you support others? So there may be, you know, getting the, the capacity to nurture ourselves and to make sure that we invest in and, and make time for what nourishes and, and makes us creative. But how do we also put our creativity in service of others? So. 
those are some of the things that we, we were talking about. Mm. Wow, thank you, Nick. I love the way that the conversation's drawing out all those things you don't necessarily associate with creativity, like resilience and vulnerability and community, um, that that's all being flagged up as being part of being creative, not just getting your paintbrush out. So mm. that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, Tracy, can we come to your group next, please? Yes, thank you, Pippa. So we have two themes. One uh, theme is around what's resonated with us and another theme is it, where are we now? What's new as a result of hearing what we've heard this morning? Um, so it, it, we recognised how creativity can be incredibly fulfilling if we align it with our whole selves and our whole lives. Um, we, need, we have a responsibility to encourage others because many in our group wouldn't be where they are today if people hadn't opened doors or been encouraging to them. Um, um, there's different routes and different ra uh, ways into a creative um, role and that we must recognize that can be at different times in our lives um, but also um, it can be it, although it can be a struggle that there is actually a career choice here to be creative and that one of the phrases that we we really champion as a group is that you can't be what you can't see and then around what's new and where we might be as a result of hearing um, the presentations today, that we must focus on our own creativity as well as giving to others. And although that might seem a little bit selfish, we've, we've really got to spend some time focusing on ourselves. Um, as well as inspiring others and what we recognise is that there are opportunities in Gloucester and as we go on our career journey which might take us out of county um, nationally or internationally that we must stay connected with people in our Gloss in, in Gloucestershire and that there are opportunities for that um, some of us recognize where and how we can influence the companies that we're in um, and that that was a great opportunity and that it's hard work um, but you know if we fail we must try again and to surround ourselves with encouraging people um, and to surround ourselves with a network of people who can encourage us and so that those are our, that's our summary from our group oh thank you so much Tracy the um the root word um, of investment is surround and I noticed the way you use that word twice how can we surround ourselves and so thinking about how can we invest in people, how can we surround people with that support and that kindness is, and that encouragement, that, that's a lovely, lovely um, thing to have captured. Um, Anna, can we come to you next, please? Great. So, yeah, as part of the Eurovision Song Contest, which I feel like I'm now part of, welcome to my group, which was Kaz, Shalise, Jan, Debs and Matt. And some of what we, what we talked about has already been mentioned. But so what I'll do is add to that. Um, we had quite a feeling conversation. We talked a lot about the kind of emotional stuff that was going on. Um, and what I noticed was that after we'd heard those four speakers, the words that people talked about were things like uh, passion, uh, humanity, energy, resilience. And it was really, I felt, I felt re there, was a, there was a lot of inspiration coming from those four fabulous speakers. Somebody at the very beginning of our second session said, um, I feel like the four speakers were directly chosen to speak to me, which I thought was wonderful. And uh, a couple of people in the group talked about doors opening, which I think is a, a real reflection on the quality of the speakers that we heard and the passion with which they spoke. Um, we also talked a little bit about systems and politics and how maybe those can start to work together in a more positive way. And um, we talked about the fact that 90% of people are good, have good intentions. So why are they, why are they kind of, if it's 10%, I don't know, why are we being held back by, 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 by that? Um, we talked about um, sticking with your passion, not diluting your dream, which is really inspirational. Um, uh, in terms of our uh, our ability to be creative, finding the space for yourself, which may be five minutes, two minutes, one minute, whatever it is um, to do that. Um, and finally, uh, we talked about not losing who you are in amongst everything that's going on. So that's it from me and our group. Thank you. Nine points, 10 points, or whatever the oh, most points is from the Eurovision Song Contest. Thank you, Anna. That importance of self is coming out, isn't it? That you can't nourish others if you don't nourish yourself. And yeah, you've made that point really clearly. And how you can be true to yourself and stay true to yourself. 
Um, thank you. Louise, can you go next? Yep, I can. Um, I was with Craig and Victoria, Bob, Leah and Sarah. Um, and what was really lovely about our, our group was just the wealth of experience in the group from uh, a recent Kickstarter who's just started out in the in the in the field in the sector um, to someone that's just about to graduate um, and start in the sector to someone that's um, recently moved to Gloucestershire and um, someone that's retired and a stalwart of the community so a real interesting wealth of experience within our group so um, some of the things that we felt that helped us um, and again some of these words we've, we've talked about already um, was resilience and just needing bucket loads of it um, and the importance of just keeping going we talked about uh, networking and collaboration and just the whole sense of um, avoiding working in isolation um, and the importance of working together and and um, even more importantly, encouraging others as well to build that creativity. Um, we talked about not worrying about finding that ultimate path and what that ultimate path might be anyhow. Um, things change. Um, it's important to be flexible and to go with the flow. Um, and the ups and downs are all part of, of that learning and those new possibilities. Um, we felt particularly um, art and culture is needed even more um, than ever um, and needed as part of, um, of the recovery process. Uh, we need it to lift our spirits um, through these difficult times um, and how much the arts and culture have a role in rebuilding society. Um, we felt um, Again, um, COVID had given us a kickstart in a different way um, and a change of mindset um, and um, particularly for, for one of our, our group, how much it had got them started on that path to, to work in, in this sector. Um, we talked about funding as well and the difficulty of, of funding, but also how that start the refreshing and the systems change in both in funding and funders and Gloucestershire funders been a really good example of how that's um, how applying for funding can be seen and done differently. Um, we talked about investment as well and just investing in yourself and having that um, level of curiosity, um, time to figure out who you are um, and particularly refine, re refinding that creativity that might have been squashed, um, particularly um, at school as well. Um, so yes, that's us. Please do add anything else in my Thank group you, in the chat. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Louise. That's great. It's nice to have a, a, an insight into the different people in your in your room this morning. So thank you for sharing that at the beginning and to get that sense of different experiences within your group and such lovely feedback. Thank you. Um, Halima, can you go next? If you can, if you're, I can't see everybody, but Halima, are you there? Can you yeah. feedback from our group? Okay, so um, we were all, all of us were really, really um, appreciative of the four speakers. Uh, one of the members said that it was a really diverse group of speakers, which was really nice, and they had different art forms and different creativity. And from, I think we all agree with everybody has said, but our main thing was confidence. Do we have enough confidence to put ourselves forward or go with our ideas? Because sometimes we have these amazing ideas, but we don't have the confidence to go ahead with them. And if we do, we know who to approach. And and this came this coming forward that is just having that confidence and knowing that there are other people out there that can help us and we can share with. And um, maybe to have a monthly or a you know couple of I don't know six weeks, maybe have some sort of Zoom meeting but all the co-creatives come together. And that's what we learned through COVID was that, you know, you don't have to travel and it's not always possible for everybody to leave because of their second catch up once a month or something. And we can all talk about how we can help ourselves and help others share information. And the other thing was, is sharing these platforms are used like, you know, do we take this to schools and mother and toddler groups? 
how do people know that if they have an idea or they want to do something creative that there is help out there with funding and you know with support from other like-minded people so you know we need to share more of this information we're all very lucky to have been you know invited here today but what happens to those that don't have these networks or don't have these opportunities then you know are we responsible to take this to our communities or people that we know other like-minded men women children teenagers can think okay well i have this idea and i can go to create gloucestershire or you know whoever it is and i can apply for funding and i'm going to get help with this and build up people's confidences so yeah and thank have you have a really good art community so yeah thank you thank you Pippa. thank you um i hope everybody could hear you, you were crackling a bit halima but i think the message that you gave about this being about confidence as much as about resources and you need to grow both um came across hopefully well um so two more to go and then we're going to um hand over to sally and imogen to tie everything together not an easy task um cal can you hear and go next yes of course thank you um we were the latvian team sarah thomas Abby, Karen, Hannah and Laura and two of her assistants in Tewkesbury. Um, we were all struck by the diversity of the speakers and what they talked about and also what they, the huge thread that they all shared. Um, and I think it was Karen that sa said that creativity is fundamental to our humanity, which I thought was a lovely soundbite to share with everyone. Um, we talked about the generosity of the speakers and of creative people and the fact that during COVID, a lot of artists and creative people had given a lot to their communities and that this um, could be sustaining for them. But also we need to recognise that those artists need space themselves. And um, Hannah was talking about an amazing um, NHS initiative that had given space to artists to just be creative and regenerate themselves, which was wonderful. Um, we talked about, I, we were all kind of struck by this next phase of industrialization. I was quite excited about this. Tom, Thomas started talking about it and I thought Shalise sort of represented it. She's, you know, she's running an, a, a textile based industry, you know, uh, company in the valleys um, but in a completely new way so, so you know it's a sustainable business using um, end of line materials and she's really keen on the circular economy so that felt like a transition into this next phase of industrialization um, but but in a sort of in maybe not in the same not in such a sort of manufacturing way but in other ways Dawn talked about that so this idea of sort of releasing us from structure so Sam is a doctor but he's also a poet and a writer. And instead of keeping those things separate, he brings them together. So it feels like um, th that we are able to, we're moving into a different realm where we can uh, merge our creativity with what we do, which we all agreed was not as important as our humanity. Um, we talked about this theme of anchors um, and that and, uh, uh, non-rational anchors. So Tom has his movie, which is not rational, but it drives him. But he also has a, an anchor in where he lives and his sense of place. And we felt like for Dawn, that might be the venture. The venture anchors her. Um, and, and we felt that Sam maybe was anchored in his poetry. So we can have those things that hold us whilst we do lots of other things. And then we also talked about this idea of locality. So um, Abby's based in Cameron Dursley and she said, we don't have that sense that we don't have that strong sense of creativity in the community, but we have lots of other things. And we kind of identified this idea that um, communities could find and celebrate their weirdness. So whatever your weirdness is, find it and celebrate it. Um, that led us to a conversation about how young people uh, need to embrace their weirdness or feel that it's okay to not be the same as everyone else and that we felt there was a lot of pressure on young people to conform and this relates back to this fourth phase of industrialization that we feel like um part of that is let, releasing from structures and i think somebody mm. else mentioned that earlier mm, thank you uh yeah that's wow. it wow 
come the revolution it started here thank you Carol. that's brilliant um so we're going to have um justine next and that's the last feedback and then we're going to um uh, hand over to imogen and to sally so justine your group thanks pippa hi yeah so i we had kenneth agnes lisa viva and michelle in our group um, and I was interested about the revolution, actually, because the revolution started to creep a little bit into, into our session as well. Um, it was more of a slow, silent one, but, but, but a very definite one, I think. Um, so I think we had a big focus on, on the power of listening and, and people's stories. And people talked about talking and unlocking um, being really key to, to both um, creative um, production but also supporting others in their creative production as well there's a lot about actually properly listening to people um, and then similarly I guess therefore the connections and the potential that that leads to people were struck by the speakers talking about the different pathways that led them to where they got to and not always knowing what they might be and the power of uncertainty and the opportunity that lies within not knowing things um, came through very strongly I think and then people, I think, were very clear in our group about the need to create space to be able to go below the surface and find out what those potential connections are. Um, and that that would require not um, only creating the time, but opening oneself and developing trust um, in order to be able to be more as creative as you possibly could. And then the phrase I like was allowing the time it takes, not just taking the time. And there was something about the group started to get quite assertive about the idea of being really clear that these things take time, that that isn't a negative, that, that the time is as much of the process as anything else. And someone talked about switching the power, using that notion of putting the time up front to switch the power um, so that more got, was, was able to be heard, really. And then also the time, as others have spoken about, to do the work and also to reflect and nourish um, for those people who are leading the work and, and who or who are wanting to be creative. Um, and then I, I think an overriding thing that came through was the hope from this event. And people talked about the massive opportunity there is from, from connecting up locally with people, but also hearing what people are doing and therefore generating hope for oneself in terms of what can be done. Wow, that's a fantastic place to end hope because I think right at the beginning when I was saying creativity is about rewriting, about writing the future, it's not written and that brings hope. So thank you for ending there, Justine. That's absolutely perfect. And thanks to your group for what sounds like really good switching ideas about power and about um, things taking time and often not having the time. Um, so... We are now going to draw this event together in some way. We've got two brilliant creative people who are going to help us do this. First of all, um, Sally Bing, who I introduced at the beginning, is going, who's been listening throughout today. And it's brilliant that Justine's just said the importance of listening. Sally has been asked to reflect back what she has heard. And we're then going to end with Imogen sharing the images that she's created as another way of listening to what has been said and shared um, while um, uh, they're doing it in different ways, which again, we hope is part of the diversity we've tried to build into this event. So Sally, the floor is yours, over to you. You're like oh. the Eurovision, you're like the Eurovision <laughs> contest judge now. <laughs> I can't tell you how terrifying this is because basically, I've just listened for the last 20 minutes to like brilliant summings up of everything. Um, and now I'm trying to make a sort of overarching order of it. And here's my piece of paper. So Imogen, are you proud of me as somebody who's um, actually usually terrified about putting pen to paper? I think I've created a bit of a bit of a doodle here. Um, and it goes on to a second page, but I'll, I will try and be brief because I'm aware of, um, time is, is sort of short. And as I said, in my small group, I can talk for England. Um, and there's so much, my brain is just on fire right now. So I'm thinking of so many things, it's gonna be a challenge. But I've numbered all my points and I'm gonna try and get through it um, in order of trying to uh, sort of like sequentially sum up what, I've, what I think works in a kind of logical order, because that's a lot of what my brain does is apply order uh, uh, to chaos or attempts to apply order to chaos. I think what I heard first was, um, the re, uh, from the speakers in particular was the 
the importance of the early inspiration of possibility. And that seemed to be a theme in, in all, all four of them. And those could be big possibilities or just very small possibilities, but there was something, it, it, interestingly, each person I think went back to some early, very early sense of, of potential. Um, and from there, I've gone on to um, picking up that I, what I've heard is that it seems to be really important to be able to find, tune into and stay true to something strong inside of yourself that wants to come out um, in whatever form that is. And again, uh, we've heard that from lots of different people. Um, it's, I, I love the, the concept of, in that of finding your weirdness. I think it's finding something strong, but maybe, and that can be something weird. Um, and I love the, in the chat, the concept of re-weirding. Um, re-weirding and rewilding. That's just gonna go completely, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, the third, those took me to, it seemed like a good idea. Um, and the importance of just kind of linking that to the, it's something could be possible. Um, and then take the leap. Don't close up too, down too quickly. Just go for it. Um, from there, I go to um, the um, a really huge topic about the multiple meanings of creativity. And I think that's been a really powerful, powerfully illustrated this morning. Um, and I went back to the very first thing that you said, Pippa, that the definition of creativity you use in Craig Gloucestershire, which is the ability to create or make something original of value, which I now understand two hours later from when we started, however long it is, completely differently to how I understood that at the start of this morning. It's really, create or make something original of value. And what we heard is those, that can be anything, absolutely anything. And the importance of saying to yourself, I am a creative person. Um, that took me to um, the whole theme of confidence, how you keep going. Um, and two really important concepts I've heard from in the groups and in the speakers about exploration and play and being, being prepared to just experiment. Um, but then, uh, and, and that, that was being really, really as important as the concept of, you know, creativity is whatever, it, it could be anything. But then I moved then to a whole theme around struggle um, and the hard work uh, of, of being creative and the importance of failing and trying again and keeping going um, and the fear of and the fear of failure and that then took me to my next theme which is about the importance of encouraging and not judging um, and the importance of having people around you to help you um, to help encourage you in that and um, I love the words, uh, again, just the recent feedback about the generosity of this community. I think that feeds into, uh, into that a spirit of encouragement. And within that, the importance, somebody said about feeding your own creativity. And I think feeding is a really, another really important verb. So I was trying to pick up important verbs through this, um, important actions, uh, and that's one. Then I went to, if I can understand my hieroglyphics, um, uh, the importance of, yeah, the process is as important as the product. So creativity, the end product may not be the creative bit. It's very easy for people to see the beautiful work of art and think that's the creativity, it, but it's the, it's the creative process. And that I've heard some people valuing that more than, than the end product. Um, uh, and, uh, then uh, that took me into the impact of the lockdown and actually that some people have been able to use, um, have this time as a way to find, to, to have that space to, to find that, um, that uh, a new creativity that they didn't have. So that importance of creating that space and, um, 
And linked to that is the importance of not fulfilling other people's expectations, which goes back to the early theme about finding what's strong um, and maybe weird inside of you that you want to fulfill. And very nearly, that's point nine, where's point 10? Oh yeah, I've only got two more points, three more points to go and then I will um, finish. So that, that took me to it's a really, really interesting theme, I think, about place and the importance of place. In, we heard it in each speaker really differently, um, both in, as, as, as an originator of, an, of creative opportunities, but also the place where creativity is, is rooted and, and can take a form. Um, and then that linking into these really interesting themes about the fourth, um, fourth industrial wave um, and the release from structures, um, from, from conventional structures. Uh, I think that's another really important theme. Um, that's sort of like all the, all the themes I picked up, but that just took me to the questions you asked me, um, Pippa, to comment on about not just what's said, but what isn't said and who isn't saying anything or who aren't we hearing. So I just want to finish by reflecting on, I think I now understand the um, title of this event better, um, how can creativity power communities in Gloucestershire? Um, I think that, that phrase we heard about, you can't be what you can't see, um, that actually it made, has made me think about who's not here, who's not in this room. Has everybody here, um, come here because they've already taken the first step of thinking about creativity. If that's the case, how do we help people who don't have that confidence or opportunity or even thought that what they do is being creative? So if we're, so I think I really understand now what you're trying to get at with this event, that how do we power communities with the incredible richness and of, if you brought together everything that everybody's talking about, you know, that the challenges of the future for us um, as a species, you know, would be, you know, we, we would have an incredible resource. Um, but how do we give everybody that sense of their power to make these kinds of changes? Um, and, and I just think that um, I'd like to end where Justine did about that actually all of this power that's, um, that's, that's there, clearly there. We, just don't unleash it is is a, a source of real hope. Mm. I hope I've done justice to all the themes mm. um, that everybody said. But oh, thank you, thank you, Sally. Yeah, you definitely have, and it's really hard to do what you've just done, and it's a new role for Craig Lush because we quite often have keynote. Um, speakers but we wanted to experiment with a keynote listener and that's been brilliant so thank you so much and um, I hope you've enjoyed being able to listen in that way thank you yeah so um, uh, Imogen are you there and ready to um, share with us the creations you've made I'm most definitely here to bring up some images that I've created this one is called tech no um, which my son um, was uh, kind of laughing at me as I was kind of struggling and stressing about managing the Zoom session. So um, that kind of is self-explanatory, I hope. I hope. So this is the idea of us all being connected. This is us at the bottom. This one was in response to um, Tom just taking life slowly. You know, surf is a, surfing, for as his example, is, is a powerful thing, but do it at your own pace. Take life at your own pace. Take creativity at your own pace. There's no, there's no right way. It's whatever works for you. Again, um, sorry, I've kind of started, I've done a couple for Tom because I kind of, that was the first ones that I was listening to again. So you use what we have as, as, as your kind of starting point, you know, this, the undulation of the place base kind of, of the Stroud Valleys and um, yeah, because take, take, take anchor in, in, in where you're at. Again, that's kind of place-based again. That's the storyline idea of us all kind of entering into the space. Um, yeah, uh, most of these, you know, you can take as literally or as abstract as you like. So that could be, uh, that could be casting our shadows, looking forward, coming together, but, but moving in a direction 
fairly self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. The dots as in kind of thoughts being aware an awareness rather than a direct kind of not necessarily having to kind of voice it literally, but kind of having it in mind. Intentional glitch on the top line. Again, playing with the dream switch. I'm an appalling speller, guys, so, um, and I've had some corker of experiences with, with text and um, public art, so uh, forgive me and I can respell anything. This was a response to Sam's talk. The idea of matter being literal and love being an emotional feeling. And I thought about this kind of take solace in the real for it is beautiful and that mixing in matter, literal matter that in his work and love and just that kind of being a, a wonderful mix and the idea of, you know, what matters and wordplay, very simple wordplay. Again, a response to, um, to Thomas forgive the others, but because I've started there, they're the ones I've managed to scan over and get over to you. So, yeah, that, that green line could be any color and, and, and any like our storyline and um, imply all sorts of different environments. You, got, you know what I'm on about there. Not all the figures are connected in, maybe thinking about it. Make of that what you will. A thought bubble, really, but with some structure, some working, beginning to kind of work into that and, and, and kind of form it into a future or a, a plan, an idea. Okay. Wow, that's amazing, Imogen. Absolutely stunning, fantastic images and how you can say so much in a different way with images to words and such a compliment to Sally's words and the, the, the stuff that's happened before. Thank you so much. Pleasure. How's the process been doing that? Fun, really fun. Good. I mean, I've just had the nicest time. It's gone in a jiff. I couldn't believe Good. that the time has gone. Yeah. Um, we wanted to end with everybody holding up the um, their image um, of the dream switch that Imogen sent out. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming and for contributing and for sharing so honestly and thoughtfully and deeply. Another thanks to our four brilliant speakers who I hope have sensed the inspiration they've given everybody and also to Sally and to Imo for just ending in a way which feels so perfect. Thank you.